Hello, you're watching Talking Europe on France 24. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome to our studio a Frenchman who has been to the very extremes, not just of Europe, but of the entire globe. Jean-Louis Etienne is a doctor and explorer. He's not just been to both poles, no, he's also had several polar exploration milestones to his name. In 1986, for example, he became the first man to ski solo to the North Pole with only aerial assistance. He's also completed the longest crossing of the Antarctic, 6,300 kilometres with a team of sled dogs and international explorers for company. Jean-Louis Etienne, thank you very much for being with us. Hello. Well, uh, I'd just like to start off by talking um, about that North Pole expedition uh, when you were up there all on your own <laughs> for that uh, historic mission. Uh, for a lot of us, the North Pole, the Arctic, it conjures up uh, very evocative images of Santa Claus and polar bears. <laughs> yes. What's it really like for you being up there on your own? First of all, very cold. You know, in the tent one night, I, I had minus 52 Celsius, which is very, very cold. The other thing is, the, the, the North Pole, you have to understand, is in the middle of an ocean, a frozen mm. ocean. Mm. And the ice, the sea ice drift from the Bering Strait, from Alaska on the other side, North Pole, and comes to um, Canada and, and, and Greenland. So when you start from north of Canada, mm. the ice is very rough. You, you cannot see the horizon. You have to pull your sled. And most every day at the beginning, I said, what, what I'm doing here? What sort of dream? It's not a, it was not a real dream. It was so difficult. And and sometimes I said, I would like to stop. Mm, you know, I bet. Yes, but day after day, um, I begin to understand how this this uh, the ice move. Mm. Uh, because what is dangerous is the ice breaks sometime and it freezes again. Yeah. And you have to cross in a place where the the ice is very thin, and the, the sea ice is flexible. So when you walk on a on a flexible ice, so you say, well, what do, yes, what to do, yeah. So at the beginning, it was very difficult, very scary, and then I became sort of polar man. Well, it sounds absolutely terrifying, I have to say. <laughs> um, you have been to the Arctic many times. Uh, the last time was three years ago when you, you flew over the yeah, Arctic Sea yeah. in a balloon. I flew across the Arctic Ocean with a balloon from Svalbard, North Pole, and the plan was to, to land in Alaska, but the, the wind push me mm. toward uh, Siberia. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what I realized is it was in April. April means the end of the winter. And I saw a lot of ice. Uh, Did it look like this? Less. I mean, oh. it was more ice oh. than water. But mm. in, in, in April, mm. in April, mm -hmm. most of the time, the, 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 the ocean is, is covered by the sea ice. But I found some place with open water. That's, mean, uh, that's, uh, that's because there global warming. Well, quite. I wanted to ask you, um, you have then seen yourself evidence yes. of global warming. Yeah, what kind evolution. of thing? For example, when I went to the pole in 86, the thickness of the sea ice was close to two meters. Mm -hmm. Now it's 1.2 meter. Wow. It's Pretty much half yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. It smells. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 all, every summer, at the end of the summer, the satellite a show is an image where the, the sea ice, the surface is decreasing. Mm -hmm. Well, have you always been interested in environmental causes or was it exploration that brought you to this You interest? know, I've been since uh, f almost 40 years in the polar region. So when you, you are going to the polar region, the people ask you, is the ice melting? Mm. You know, I say, yes, I can tell you the ice is melting. For example, I crossed the Antarctic Ocean. That's, that's the, the other expedition. Of course. I crossed the Antarctic. Antarctic is uh, the continent of the South Pole. With land rather than the sea in the Arctic. It's land yeah. covered yeah. by the ice, mm -hmm. a huge piece of ice. Mm -hmm. The surface of the Antarctic, we talk about the South Pole, mm -hmm. is the size of the uh, United States and Mexico combined. And it's covered with a piece of ice of 2.5 kilometers the thickness, you know. I crossed this uh, continent in uh, 8990. The first 600 kilometer, we call that the Larsen ice shelf. The, the, the ice come from the ice come from the mountains, mm -hmm. and it's floating ice mm. platform. Yeah, this is typical floating ice. Mm -hmm. And the first 600 kilometer, they have disappeared. 
Wow. That means it's yeah. a reality, yeah, the global warming, yeah. Well, um, just coming back to the Arctic, yeah. um, we've uh, been talking on France 24 about damage to the uh, well, global warming, freeing up new areas of, of Arctic territory uh, where there can be new industry, uh, oil, gas exploration, transport. Uh, how worried are you about damage to the environment from this, this moving in of industry? Mm. Talking with um, the French oil company Total, the president said we will not exploit the, 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 the oil because the leak, leak of mm -hmm. oil will be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. you know? they, will, they plan to exploit only the gas, and which is not a problem in case of uh, um, leaks. leaks yeah. But what is difficult is we, nobody is allowed to say to the, the countries around the Arctic Ocean, the, the Russians, mm. the Russians, Canada, United States, and please leave this oil in the shore. They have the rights. It's a commercial in the decision. Co it's a commercial, and they have, they have the rights to exploit this, uh, this gas. And do you believe that uh, these minerals will then be exploited to, uh, to a great extent? Yeah, I hope not, but uh, yes, I think so, because... Uh, the transition between the, uh, the, 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 the fossil fuel and other things, mm. it will take time. And uh, we will probably need this, this gas yes, for the transition, yeah. But they have really to take care. Because if there is a leak of oil, mm. can you imagine a polar bear coming through the, the, the ice, mm. black cover? Yeah, the, the, it will be catastrophic for the company. And very hard to, to clean up as well because it's impossible. so very remote. Impossible, impossible to you clean think, up. Really? It's possible, for example, in the warm, hot sea, uh -huh. uh, Mexican Gulf, for uh -huh. example. What's the difference then? The temperature. No, but I mean, why does that make a difference? Ah, because the bacteria, uh. you know, the bacteria, they eat. Mm. The, when the temperature is close to 20, 25 degrees. But in this cold water it will be not possible. The, the gas will stay there for a long period of time. Well, we just briefly touched on another concern about the Arctic, uh, those, those countries around the Arctic that have territorial claims. Yeah, yeah. And as that ice it's is not shrinking... It's claims, there are the rights to. The rights. Well, yeah. there are overlapping claims as well. And oh, overlapping. Yeah. yeah. Norwegian, for example, and Russian. But uh, Under the areas that are currently covered in ice. Yeah. Now, when you're actually up at the North Pole... Isn't it somewhat arbitrary which bit sort of belongs to, to whom, or, or do you are you impacted by that? Well, normally the, the, the international rule of the sea gave to you the 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 uh, the freedom to exploit the gas or the the, the, the water and the and and the, and the, mm -hmm. the ground of the ocean until two hundred miles from your shore. So this is an international rule, you know. That they, uh, they they can do that. Another question is about the navigation. Uh, one thing. People say sometimes the global warming will give the access to the exploitation of the gas. It's not the global warming. Mm -hmm. It will always be ice because during the winter the, the ocean freeze. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It will be when the burial, the oil will be high enough in order to be profitable. Yeah, that's the reason. Mm. So are you concerned that there could be disputes over these increasingly valuable in some places. minerals? In some places, for example, uh, the, the erosion and the revision. But I think they have, to, they have found the uh, rules, they have found the border, I think, yeah. Mm. But uh, it, the, the, the question is beyond the, these 200 miles, some are uh, claim climb until, until 305, 305 uh, miles. miles. But uh, they are not allowed. They try to prove, the Russian, they try to prove they have until the North Pole. That, you know, talking with the, some politician in, in Moscow, they say, this belongs to us. Mm -hmm. This is North Pole, mm -hmm. and <laughs> this is for sure. It will, could be some dispute, yes. Well, I'd also like to talk about the Antarctic, of course, uh, the South Pole, uh, the polar pod, 
is your next big yeah. mission yeah. Uh, due to be launched uh, well it's still in its planning phase at the moment can you just tell us about this you're going to be uh, below the sea's surface in a sort of a laboratory yeah uh, we are talking about the exploration of the southern ocean so we talked before north pole now south pole at the south pole there is a huge continent antarctica the antarctic continent all around it's the southern ocean is a huge ocean to combine this, the, the, the water of Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. This huge oceanographic area is quite unknown mm. because there are very few, very few uh, expeditions. This vessel, Pora Pod, it. yeah. will be very stable and comfortable in, this, uh, in the roaring 50s. So this is a computer-generated uh, simulation of the polar pole. It's a simulation, yeah. So it but sailed out there flat and then sunk. What's interesting on this picture is the size of the, the people. Uh -huh. you, know, you, yeah. you will have an idea about the size. Mm -hmm. It's 100 meter high mm -hmm. and there is 80 meter below the sea level and it's catching very solid water. So what's the interest? What, why send the, this wonderful why? machine out there? <laughs> yeah. This huge ocean is the principal carbon sink mm. of the planet because the CO2, carbon dioxide, dissolve in the cold water. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows precisely the efficiency of this uh, dissolution of the CO2. That's the first thing we, we're going to measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second thing, it's below the sea level, at 80 meters below, it's calm. And with some hydrophone, we would catch the sound of all the species. We will do a census of my life by acoustic. Another thing, in microplastic and contaminants, we, we don't know if they, they still are there. Yeah, I, I know that you have compared this uh, polar pod mission to going aboard the International Space Station. Uh, our viewers might be wondering how on earth that's similar. <laughs> one's up in space, one's below the sea. What is similar? I mean, we, we, we will drift with the current uh -huh. very slowly around Antarctica. But the other thing is it will be on board three sailors and four engineers, and there is 50... 50 sensors, 50, 50 instruments, mm -hmm. and all only these four people will manage all those uh, sensors. Sounds quite lonely. Yeah, this is that's why it's sort of similar to the International Space Station. Yeah. Well, uh, it's still in the planning phase, like I said. Uh, is it definitely going to happen? What, what yes. do you need to make yeah. it happen? The French government will pay for the uh, to build the the polar pod. So I got the uh, confirmation from the minister, François de Rugy, mm -hmm. uh, a few days ago. He confirmed that the French government will pay for. It will be a, a, a vessel, oceanographic vessel. And I have to raise the money for the expedition itself. This is a lot of job, a lot of work, uh, but I'm close to, yeah. And uh, we plan to start in October 21. Well, uh, speaking about the French government, uh, here in France, President Macron has declared himself to be a champion against climate change, uh, encouraging American scientists, for example, to, to come to France and work on climate change science. But environmentalists don't always agree that his policies actually match up with those words. What's your opinion? Well, the, uh, President Macron was very uh, helpful for the climate. Uh, after Donald Trump left the... the, the the, the Paris contract agreement. of Paris, mm -hmm. yeah. He say, uh, make the planet great again, and uh, he's, he's convinced that uh, the, the global warming is the, is the real problem for the, the planet. And for example, when the, the President Trump say, when it was cold last year mm. in New York in December or February, I mean, it will be cold this year too. <laughs> it's normal, it's cold during the winter in New York, Montreal. And he said, well, look at this. It's so cold and people are talking about the global warming. Mm. He forget to, de to say something very important. At the same period of time, it was very hot in South Australia, South Africa, mm. and Southeast of Asia. So we talk about the global warming. Nobody can feel the global warming because it's one Celsius degrees in one century. You mm -hmm. cannot feel it. It's a reality. We've had some quite uh, scary predictions from scientists uh, in recent weeks and months about global warming, saying we've essentially got uh, less than a generation to turn things around. Uh, given that that's happening, uh, you've also got important voices like Donald Trump saying climate change isn't real. Uh, 
Does that leave you optimistic? It's not helpful, no. But thing we have to do first is not to invest, I mean, I'm speaking to the, the banks or events, investors, not anymore invest money on coal. The coal is, the, the burned coal, burning coal mm. emits a lot of CO2. But in some countries, for example, Germany or Poland, yeah. absolutely Europe, reliant on coal. Yes, that's why it will take time. Mm. You know, 93% of the global warming is catch by the ocean, 93%. So we are changing the cycle of, of the water. A lot of evaporation, rain, mm -hmm. cyclone, and on, on the other side, there is some drought. Yeah. This is, a, and it's so, it's a cr sort of chronic fever, you know. And when we have a chronic fever, say, well, I feel something, we have to do something. And we have to. Well, just briefly before we end the show, then, what would your message be to people who don't believe in climate change? It's impossible to feel in your body the climate <laughs> change when people say, well, look at it, this is cold, it's June and it's cold. No, it doesn't mean nothing. It's one degree in one century. Nobody can feel it. It's a scientific measurement. And it's a sort of, well, I say that often, I'm a doctor, and I said this is a, a chronic fever, small fever, you know. But take care of it, yeah. Well, Jean-Louis Etienne, thank you very much for being our guest here on Talking it's Europe. It's a pleasure, thank it's you. It's been great to talk to you and uh, good luck for your future expeditions. Thank you. Thank you as well for watching the programme. We'll see you very soon here on France 24. Special event. Ready, set and go. The race is on to replace Jean-Claude Juncker here as president of the European Commission. Join us in Brussels on France 24 for a special debate with some of the top contenders vying to take that powerful hot seat. Watch events unfold on France 24 and France24.com.